What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another ladder battle here. We've got a replay it with Bisu versus Shine. Bisu, one of those legendary players who's been around forever, who has that reputation, who has been killing it for the entirety of Brood War history. I mean, he wasn't there in the boxer days, but... This man has been clapping cheeks since before Flash even got his first title. Before he even played in his first professional match, this guy was popular. And he's still out here doing it, boys. He is still out here making it into ASLs and getting all kills in the KCM. And it is amazing to see. Really... So impressed by this guy. So we're going to take a look at how he's doing on the ladder right now. This was played one week ago. Just one week ago. He was up against Shine here on Retro. We're going to take a look at what kind of game we're going to get here. Bisu. Absolute beast in this matchup. But Shine, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve, man. He's always got some interesting play style. To throw out and uh, give us some very good games. Now, I've actually got this map banned. I've got this map vetoed from my ladder games. We've been playing a lot on ladder, by the way, recently. Uh, going pretty well. I wouldn't say it's going fantastic, but hey, it is what it is. It's Brood War Ladder. It's a grind no matter what you do. No matter how you look at it, no matter who you are. It is going to be a grind. Just about 50% win rate on most of the accounts. We're around B rank. Uh, for the most part. I think we've got one account in C rank right now. But. It is what it is. Always bouncing in between those two ranks. Never quite able to get to A rank just yet. But we're going to keep working on it. I'm going to be paying attention. Very carefully here to Shine. Who is. One of the craftiest. Zerg players, and this is actually why I ban this map, by the way. Um, look at what we're seeing here, right? Bisu's in the top right. Shine is in the top left, which means that the third base, taking it over here, would be really, really hard to hold. Very hard to hold. Oh, great pullback there. Oh, gonna lose one drone, unfortunately. Did pull back one of the drones uh, to safety during that fight, but... Um, Unfortunately, going to lose one drone, which kind of negates the benefits of going for this build. Unfortunate there for Shine, but look at where he's had to place his third base. It's way down over here. Now, just think about this, guys. Think about the situation that now Shine is in. If he needs to defend, let's say he needs to defend some sort of big uh, timing push, two base timing push from Bisu. Let's say Bisu doesn't go for like a zealot all in or anything. He doesn't, you know, try to do anything too fancy. He just kind of torments Shine with some Corsairs. He just goes for some, you know, regular Protoss play to try and slow down Shine. And then he gears up with eight gateways and sends a bunch of Dragoon, Zealot, and High Templar across the map. Think about how hard it is to defend here. <clears throat> if you're able to defend here, it's not too bad. You can defend this little choke right there, and you can defend this right here. And it's not going to be too, too hard. But here, we're going to have to defend these two chokes on the third base. And we're going to have to defend this spot and this spot as well. As Shine. Either that, we're going to have to defend here, here, and here. And that's it's just very, very hard, guys. Like, what we're seeing right now is the exact reason why I quit playing this map, why I vetoed this map indefinitely, is just it's so tough. The rush distance is really short as well. If you're playing against Terran and they're over in this spot, they do two racks against you, you can't build sunken colonies fast enough to prevent the two racks from killing you. You have to already have the sunkens ready 
And uh, yeah, it's just a pain in the butt. So I don't really like this map, but we're going to see how Shine decides to play it out here. He's got the Spire on the way. He's got enough Lings going here. He's a little bit supply block right now. He can't actually build any more Lings right at this moment. He's actually not building Lings. He's building drones. He believes that he has the right number of Lings here to take this out. And it appears that he is indeed correct. He will be able to uh, run these Zealots down and he should be able to clean all of them up. Does lose quite a few of those Lings, but... As you can see, full drone production going on behind this. Exactly what you want here. Uh, this is not what you want, though, unfortunately, here for Shine. It's going to lose one drone. Bisu doing a good job splitting off one Zealot. Just typical, typical Protoss play. Very annoying stuff, but exactly what you want to do as a Protoss player to just... Oh, he loses another drone there. Bisu always getting the most out of his units. The best value from his units. And Shine unfortunately they're losing yet another drone to the harassment of Bisu. And this is just Bisu in a nutshell, man. He is so darn good at getting those little, little tiny bits of value every single time. Every single time he's going to grab those uh, little tiny advantages and they will eventually snowball into a big old push when he goes ahead and trades with your army that you won't be able to resist. You won't be able to hold back that giant, giant Dragoon Templar Zealot army. So, Shine here, he's getting into his six hatches. He's been a little bit slowed down, of course. He's lost another Overlord here. He has Flyer Carapace on the way. So, now what we're looking at with this second gas coming up is the potential for a Mutalisk transition. Now, big Mutalisk swell. Could be really scary for Bisu to deal with, though he is still producing some Corsairs here. It can get a little bit scary if you start to lose a few Corsairs. And Mutalists start to get pumped, you could lose control of your main base. I'm not sure that Bisu is fully aware of what's coming just yet. He sees the, uh, uh, the, the Scourge Scout here. Scourge Scout checking everything out. Looking out for the potential of one Corsair popping out that he could potentially pick off here. Not going to find that right now, but he's going to be tracking these Zealots coming across the map. And as you can see, I don't. There, there's no Hydroden. We've got no Hydroden in the production tab. We have no Evolution Chamber either. So not going to be uh, splurging on the Evolution Chamber. Not going to be researching... Those upgrades, those uh, very important, honestly, very important that you get those upgrades rolling here. So the fact that we don't see them in the production tab is really leaning itself towards a Mutalisk call in Now, there's the Hydroden coming up, but it is quite late. Those upgrades are going to take some time to come online here. There's the Evolution Chamber as well. He's been focusing really, really hard on droning up as much as possible. Uh, you know, producing as little units to defend as possible as well, right? Just a few Lings here and there, a few Mutas here and there. And now starting to build up into that very, very big, scary Scourge count that's going to potentially overwhelm Bisu, who's now actually coming out on the map, and that's been spotted. Can he actually come in right now? I think that, uh, unfortunately, Shine not paying attention at this moment. There we go. He's going to pay attention now. He will get one connection on one of these scourge now some zealots are going to try to run in here this is actually a full wall by the way zealots cannot get through this you can put hydras through that that little hole there but zealots cannot go through that that's a perfect little wall in here absolutely perfect not going to end up blocking yourself with the eggs or anything and the hydras can get out so that if you're playing zerg on this map you should absolutely be copying that Ooh, almost going to get some hits off with the Scourge. Not going to be able to, unfortunately. Archon is now out. Archon going to be driving away these Mutas and Scourge potentially. Oh, is he going to get a big hit here? Okay. Does get a couple hits off with those Scourge, but now he's actually got to bail out of here with the Mutas because you don't want to allow the Corsairs to get the moving shot on all of your Mutas. Your, every single Muta could go down. He does pick off the Probe, which is actually a big deal right now. Getting the probe is pretty darn decent. Unfortunately, going to lose this other Muta. That does go down too. So he's only got two Mutas. That's not going to be enough to break the main. And it looks like he is transitioning. 
We have forgotten our upgrade, though. This is something that you can absolutely end up doing uh, in these type of situations. You know, you're doing a lot of micro. You're trying to control Scourge and Mutas and get your upgrades rolling and all that good stuff. Very easy to forget this all incredibly important upgrade, guys. We have plus one armor already. And I'm sure that we're going to start plus two armor here pretty darn soon for Isu. So not having that upgrade could act just totally shut down this game. It could totally shut down this game for, for Shine. Shine, everything looking pretty darn good. The 55 workers, the six hatcheries, the, uh, you know, the setup here is very decent. He has speed. He has Lurker on the way. He's going to push in here towards the third base. There's no Templar. Things are looking pretty good for him, but that lack of upgrade, I tell you right now, guys, it is hurting him so badly in this game. It is really going to mess him up here as time goes on. We have some Templar coming down now. He can't make out up this ramp. Such is the, uh, the problem with Zerg. Even if you've got you know, two, three full groups of Hydras trying to push up this ramp. Enough Zealots and a couple Cannons will prevent you from doing that forever. Just cannot make it up that ramp, unfortunately. So he will have to back off and now finally noticing that upgrade. Ooh, that, that really does hurt, guys. And I think we might see Shine try to, like, dive in somewhere and try to make this game get out a little bit out of control. But we've got Templar. Ooh, great snipe there on one of those Templar. Does eat a big storm here, though, and probably going to have to back off from this position. Uh, yeah, that's not looking good. We'll have to back away from this natural with this big group of Hydras. Even if you've got, you know, mass, mass Hydra, you've got so many, so, so many Hydras. Two, three, four uh, control groups worth of Hydras. You just cannot break into a Protoss player on this map. It's just not going to be possible. This is retro for you guys. You just cannot make it up here. Instead, he's going to take double base. So two bases on the way, setting up some lurkers for a potential contain. This is very awkward, though. Putting these lurkers this close to the natural is highly dangerous. Highly, highly dangerous. If uh, Bisto pushes out right now and gets on top of those eggs, you might end up just seeing lights out here. Now, he is going to get those Lurkers out. He does snipe the Observer as well. So, there's only one Observer remaining here. So, maybe, just maybe, he can hold on to this position. Get a couple of Lurkers down here as well. You know, prevent the breakouts on this side of the map also. And then, maybe he can uh, hold these bases down the bottom left while all of this is craziness is going on. He still does not have plus one. So, these Zealots are going to be tanking so so much damage we've got a dt down here in the bottom left that's being super super annoying corsairs are going to get chased by the scourge but we need to get a, an overlord down here with a, a couple of hydras at least you know four hydras i would say would be kind of the magic number for dealing with a, a dark templar that's out on the map he's gonna run forward try to get this snipe on the observer but he just can't quite get it right now not the right angle he will jump in one more time he does get it the Scourge come back to try and help in that effort, but they are not necessary as Bisu has been shoved back once again. But there's the next Observer. Will he try to break out right now as the second of the, the next Observer shows up? Or is he going to wait for another Observer here? It seems like he wants to go right now because this is the time when the, the Zerg is going to be the weakest. Can he actually get some snipes here? He gets two snipes on two different Templar. Really nice snipes there from Shine. He's going to dive on top of this Observer. Observer is so low. It's just not going to be picked off, though. The army is quite large here for Bisu. And without the uh, the snipes on this Observer, he might be able to break through. There's so many units over at the rally point right now. Shine not bringing them up. Another mistake from him is going to cost him this position. And it looks like Bisu now unleashed here on the map. This is a very scary moment for a Zerg player. Right as the Protoss is getting out here on the map is when things can go from bad to worse, when things can get really down and dirty. So hopefully Shine will find a way 
to maneuver himself out of this bad spot. The bases in the bottom left are completely wide open. Oh man, a Dark Templar getting in here, getting four kills already, and a probe managed to slip into the bottom right. Oh man, things are really not going well for Shine right here. I don't know how that probe managed to get out here and why we didn't have an, uh, an Overlord or something watching out for that, but we did not have that. Now there's so many different places to defend here. We've got to defend this location right here. We have to defend here. And we have to defend here as well. Those are the key uh, locations for defense uh, if we want to stay alive here against the pressure that's going to be coming from Bisu now. He's got this bottom right-hand corner. And even if we hold these bases here, even if we manage to keep Bisu from killing us right now, Bisu is still going to have this base, and he's going to get this base eventually. And that means he has about half the map. And with half the map, the Protoss player can play, uh, can take you basically to a mine-out scenario where you're going to lose, or you're going to run out of all your money. And he's still going to have a lot of money left over because the trading is just too good for the Protoss uh, side. They can trade out so much better than you. You have to have more bases than them, so... This is a dire situation right now for Shine Shine. Only having two Lurkers here and they're stacked up. Okay, two more on the left-hand side are helping out quite a lot. The Hydras are fighting here, but the lack of upgrades is hurting so badly. It is a really, really painful right now for Shine as he loses control of his rally point. This is generally how we'll see a lot of Zerg players die, how I die very often as well, is when you lose control of your rally point and the... Protoss is standing on top of it. All the Hydras that are popping out are going to run in to their deaths over and over again. Make some Lurker Eggs here, please. All right, we're not going to do that. Some emergency sunken colonies coming down for Shine right now, but the writing's on the wall. Bisu pushing in for the win. A Lurker Egg on the ramp. Going to buy a tiny bit of time here, but what is it buying time for exactly? We've got just Hydras rallying back from the other bases, but they're going to be eating big storms as they run in. There's so many Templar here ready and waiting for Bisu, plus all of these Lurk, or these, uh, excuse me, Dragoons as well. Rallies coming across here. Bisu staking more bases at the same time as all of this is going on. We've got just a few high just trickling in, but they can't even match the DPS of the Dragoons and the Archon standing in front are going to take the day. GG is called. Shine taps out and Bisu is successful. Yikes, guys. I... I don't know. I feel like this was a bit of a rough game from Shine. There were some big mistakes that were made here that are just kind of unforgivable in this level even at the the you know BA rank level these these mistakes are almost unforgivable there's some things you can do to try and bring a game like this back like we saw you know lurker contain over here at this location force the protoss to fight there keep killing the observers that's a way to get back into the game um but not having these upgrades, man, it really, really hurts. Another thing, not rallying your hatcheries to the location where you're trying to contain. You need to send everything to this spot so that the moment that the units are ready, they're here and ready to fight, ready to hold back the Dragoons and Zealots from getting on top of your Lurkers. These are really important tactics to keep in mind whenever you are fighting a Protoss that's ahead. You have to be on top of these things. You have to have all these things in play. As we can see, going forward here, still not that plus one. And let's just take a look at the point when Bisu broke out. This is when the breakout moment happened. This is when he was finally able to keep that Observer alive. Oh wait, this is when the Observer went down. But right after this, the Observer ends up staying alive and Bisu ends up breaking out. But look at where the rallies are right here, right now for Shine. We've got a ton of Hydras right here. A lot of, the, a lot of Hydras right here. You know, 12... 
24 Hydra, something like that. There's another 12 right there. This is when he breaks out. This is when he breaks out. Look at how many Hydras we have at this location. We're spending the money pretty well. We're kind of dealing with some things over at these bases, right? We've got a DT walking around. Things are not going well. He also didn't scout this location. If we see that the Protoss army is trying very hard to break out of this po position of the map, we have to bring everything to defend this position. We have to bring our rallies. We have to bring this other... Uh, army from here as well leave the one lurker and just send everything over there keeping track of this keeping tabs on this base down here in the bottom right also super super important just leaving one ling or one overlord down there can mean the difference between a win and a loss in some of these games so unfortunately bisu takes down shine Shine not able to put together a great game here. Sometimes we get really good games on retro for PvZ, but I just can't stand it, guys. There's the the thing about retro for me is that uh like I was saying, it's really difficult with certain spawns. If the spawns are like this where you can't take this as your third, you have to take this as your third, things are really messy and hectic. And then also it feels really repetitive. Every time I play on this map, it's like I'm playing the exact same game over and over and over again because the way that the map functions, the way that PvZ functions on this map is it's just there's only kind of one way to play and it's very frustrating. I'm really not a big fan of this map. That's why I've got it vetoed. Anyway, guys, that's it for your daily dose of Brood War. If you want to come check me out on the ladder, I'll be streaming every day on Twitch.tv slash Guys, thank you for watching again. I'll see you in the next one.